right, what I'd like to do is tell you a little bit about overview of uh, inverses. So a lot of times we're, you know, we're talking about inverses, it gets mixed around a lot with you know, reciprocal and stuff, but what I really want you to think about when we're thinking of inverses and functions, I want you to start thinking back with uh, domain and range and what really domain and range uh, really means. Remember, domain is gonna be your set of all your x values um, that are defined for your function, and your range is gonna be set of all the y values that are defined for your function. So let's just say, actually, let's start off with an ordered pair. And let's just say that um, I'm given an ordered pair, one, two, three, or one, two, three. So let's say I'm given the ordered pair, one, comma, three. All right? And we know that we have an x and a y coordinate, and we know that x is going to be a part of our domain, and y is going to be a part of our range. So what the inverse is actually talking about is if I was going to give you an inverse function, and I'll put a fun and I'll put a uh, an actual uh, function equation up there to talk about, but what the inverse is talking about is that a function, the domain of a function is equal to the range of its inverse. So what really is happening when you're talking about a function and its inverse, what's happening is your domain and ranges are actually switched. So if I was going to switch kind of the domain and range of you know, this coordinate point, it would now become three comma one. So let's go ahead and take a look at of actually two um, function equations that would go to between these three points. And the one I'm thinking of right at the top of my head is uh, 3x. So let's say we have f of x equals 3x. Well, just like we were graphing it, y equals 3x, we know it's going to go rise 3 over 1. Rise 3 over 1. And so the graph is going to look something like this. Now, if we were going to look at the inverse, um, I know this next point. The next point is going to be 3, 1, okay? 4, 5, 6, 6, comma, 2. Now, if I was going to look at the inverse without actually finding the inverse algebraically, if I was just going to look at a graph, what I would notice is the inverse is going to be the exact opposite on the x chord, on the x uh, axis. So it would be 1, 4, 5, 6, up 2. So the inverse would actually be following this line, as this is, wow. Sorry about that. I think I'm losing it. That's comma two, comma three. See, even on my videos, I'm gonna make my mistakes. You're going over one, up three, over two, up six. My apologies. It's been already a long day. So you have up three, over one, and then we're here, you go over six, up two. So what you notice is each one of these coordinate, seriously, sorry about that. I'll try to focus here. So what you guys notice is this graph is going to go infinitely this way. What you will see is these inverses are exact opposites kind of each other. And what they're actually, they actually have symmetry about what we call the xy line. All right. So when we're talking about uh, inverses and we're going to want to find, you know, if a graph is inverses graphically, what we can do is we can reflect it about the xy line. And when we get into problems and I talk about graphing them, you'll see the symmetry of the inverses. So a couple things to notice, um, a couple things to take care of. One, one thing we need to look at when we're talking about inverses is not every function is an inverse. For example, a quadratic. That is not an inverse function. The reason why is it's not onto. I'm sorry, it's not one to one. I wanted to say one to one, I say onto. It's not one to one. What, it, what one to one means is every value in your domain is has to be linked to exactly one value in its uh, in the range. Well, here we have let's say this is negative two, and this one's two. Well, if I was going to say y equals uh, x squared, we know that y equals negative two squared is equal to two squared, right? Both those values are equal to four. So even though the x values are different, the output is still the same. So therefore, this is not one to one. Now, why does one to one tell you if it's a, it has an inverse or not? Well, let's look at our reflection. If I was to reflect this about the x y line, that means I'm going to take this and I'm going to flop it like over this. What I would get 
would be a graph that looks like that. Now, of course, we can graph this. That's not a fine. That's a fine relation, but it's not a function because it does not pass the vertical line test. There, now we have a domain that has two different range values, or a value for in our domain that has two different range values. Therefore, it's not a function. So the way to test if a function has an inverse graphically is what we like to call the horizontal line test. And if you do a horizontal line test and it crosses at two points, then you know that it's not going to pass the vertical line test when you're finding the inverse. Um, last thing I'd like to kind of go through is just the steps. If we go back to this function and I say, all right, well, how am I going to determine then if, it's a, if it has an inverse without looking at the graph? Well, there's a couple steps. We have f of x equals 3x. The first thing we want to do is remember we're switching the domain and range. So if you think of this as your x, y, and that's kind of your domain, and that's your range, right? Well, first of all, we're dealing with an input, output, functions. We're not talking about x and y's. So to make the math kind of easier, we like to go ahead and go back to our, our x and y's. A lot of people like this, they're like, oh, f of x, I'm dying with f of x. Now I'm back to y. All right, I kind of feel a little bit uh, more confidence here doing math, uh, math problems. So, well, now the next thing is to find the inverse, we have to flip the x and the y's. That's your domain and range, your input, output. Those need to be switched. So let's switch them. All right, well, now we still need to solve for y because, you know, y is still going to be, is supposed to be our output. That's, I mean, that's supposed to be what we're trying to find the value of. So I need to undo my operation, so I'm going to divide by 3. Therefore, I get y is equal to x over 3. So that would be my graph, which is this right here. But I need to put it in my inverse notation. So we write f inverse of x equals x over 3. So therefore, you guys can see the function f of x equals 3x, and the inverse is going to be f inverse of x is equal to x over 3. So that's just kind of a broad overview of inverses. We'll be doing some problems to show you guys how we define the inverses and also how we verify the inverse. And But I think this video is getting a little too long, so I'll show it, uh, verifying inverses on another separate video.